Yesterday I did a playthrough with Salamence in Pokemon Emerald, so today I must do Metagross. Playthrough rules are in the description, and if you haven't seen yesterday's video, please check it out first. Metagross is the second pseudo-legendary introduced in Generation 3. I really love the idea of introducing two every generation. I wish it was something they had continued to do. It feels like Dragon and Steel typings are very suitable for pseudo-legendaries. And Metagross has one of the best typings in the game. It has the Steel type, which is fantastic defensively, and the Psychic type, which in early generations was completely broken. It also has incredible stats. 80 HP, 135 attack, 130 defense, 95 special attack, 90 special defense, and 70 speed. Today I'm going to go with a Naughty Nature to boost my attack and lower my special defense. Of course there are some downsides to using a pseudo legendary. In this case it has a slow growth rate, and it also starts with base 35 friendship. So return is going to take a little bit longer to become powerful. Metagross's ability is Clear Body, which prevents it from having its stats lowered, which is really nice in a game where there are a lot of Intimidate users. It has a fantastic starting set, Tackle, Confusion, Metal Claw, and Scary Face, and then through level up it gets access to Pursuit, Psychic, Iron Defense, Meteor Mash, Agility, and Hyper Beam. By the way, Meteor Mash is one of my favorite move names in the entire game. It's a little bit unfortunate that it's base 85 accuracy, but it does have a secondary effect, which is a 20% chance of raising the user's attack stat by one stage, and with base 100 power, I think the accuracy makes sense in context. Through TM and HM, Metagross also gets access to a decent amount of coverage. Earthquake, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Sludge Bomb, Rock Tomb, Aerial Ace, and Rock Smash. Of these, the standout moves, of course, are Earthquake and Shadow Ball. I think both of those will have use in today's playthrough. I find it very funny that Metagross can learn Sludge Bomb. Like, why? It's a steel type. While it's nice to have, but Sludge Bomb overall is not that useful in Pokemon Emerald. There are not a lot of prominent grass type Pokemon, and the ones that do show up are not very good anyways. You probably just want to be using Aerial Ace against them so that they don't set up double team. For today's playthrough, the rival is going to have Torchic. I'm realizing now that I might have called this thing Chikorita in previous videos. Yes, Chicken and Chikorita sound very similar, but the grass type starter is nothing like Torchic. In this video, I've given the rival the fire type starter just because it's super effective against Metagross. In retrospect, I think that perhaps facing the Mudkip line might have been a little bit harder, but in the end, I don't think it's really going to matter. The rival shouldn't be much of an issue. In the early game, a lot of psychic types really struggle to get by a youngster Calvin without having to use struggle. For example, Mewtwo and Gardevoir. But with Metagross in the early game, it doesn't have problems against dark types since it has steel and normal coverage. I am proud of myself here because I only pick up the Oran Berries and leave the Pecha Berries, I'm actually remembering that I can't be poisoned. In so many of my runs, you'll see me buy antidotes with Steel-type or Poison-type Pokemon, and it's always a little bit painful when I do it. I usually remember right after it happens. These kind of mistakes occur because they're really ingrained in muscle memory. In the Rossboro Gym, I just want to see how much damage Metagross is doing to Geodudes. In this case, Metal Claw just one hits the first one. That one is level 10, so I think that I can face Roxanne now after I fight the other two trainers in the gym. With a level 12 Metagross, let's see how this goes. Her first Pokemon is a level 12 Geodude. I go for Metal Claw, taking it down to red health, get hit by Rock Tomb, but this cannot lower my speed. The AI is going to continue spamming this move because it wants to lower my speed, and I don't think it understands that Clear Body is preventing this. Upon examination, this is actually a disadvantage for Metagross, because if they weren't using Rock moves, they would do a little bit less damage. They don't get the same type of attack bonus with Tackle. Either way, this is irrelevant because her Pokemon just can't do enough damage. I level up to 13. 13, she sends in Nose Pass. I do more than half to it with a single hit. Rock 2 misses. Its Orenberry restores some health, but Metagross crits, and so that's an easy first win. A 10% attack boost is really nice, and I can use the TM for Rock Tomb now if I really want. I do the optional rival battle. I two-shot both of his Pokemon with Confusion. The reason I do this fight is usually just for experience. I don't want to go into the next section of the game under-leveled. After all, Brawly is neutral against me. I deliver the letter to Steven Stone, and there aren't a lot of trainers between Roxanne and Brawly, other than the ones in the gym. So I'm going to deposit my HM users and head into the gym so that I don't have to do any of the double battles. This way, I can gain the maximum possible experience for Metagross and do a bit of additional training. 
It's been a really long time since I fought the trainers in this gym, and I actually forgot the fact that when you defeat them, the little flash circle that is preventing your vision gets slightly larger so that you can see more of the gym. That's a nice little mechanic to help the player if you're really struggling in here. With that training out of the way, Metagross is now level 17, I give it an Orenberry, and I'm ready to take on Brawly. In this fight, I am relying on Confusion. I'm hoping that it's going to one-shot all of Brawly's Pokémon, with the, of course the exception of the Meta-type, but it's not going to do anything because of Focus Punch. I do take out the Machop in a single hit, then he sends in Meta-type, which again is not going to do anything. The only damage-dealing move it has is Focus Punch, and I cannot miss with Confusion because there's no Gen 1 miss. That means that Metagross can make it to his ace for free. The Makuhita really isn't doing much, so I finish it off, and with that, I'm heading to Slateport Beach. Here I do some additional training, I finish the Team Aqua Grunts in the museum, and then I head north to face the rival. So in this case, the fight is quite easy because I can one-shot the Combuskin with Confusion. After that, the Lombre is easy to clean up, and then I make it to Mauville City. The first thing I do here is always pick up the TM for Rock Smash, just so I don't forget it. And I'm going to teach this to Metagross right away in the place of Scary Face, so I have super effective damage against Watson's Magneton. The disadvantage to doing this is that I can't unlearn the move until I reach Lily Cove City after the 6th gym. I don't think Metagross is going to need the extra move slot though, so I'd rather just have more reliability against Watson. Also, since this is going to be the last Pokemon Emerald video of the entire year, I want to note something else that I'm proud of myself for. I am now remembering to pick up the bike whenever I get to Mauville City for the first time. I used to always forget it and have to backtrack here later. By the way, I've had some questions about my bike rules because they are different within every generation. They largely come down to trying to keep my current series consistent for results, and that is basically it. For Generation 3, I banned the bike specifically because it is brutal to use it in the overworld. It goes so fast and it makes both my brain and eyes hurt. When playing on 4x speed, running is just fast enough. I fight trainers in the surrounding region, bringing Metagross up to level 27, and now I think I'm ready to take on Watson. Okay, I'm going to start this fight off with a Steel-type fact. Did you know in Generations 2, 3, 4, and 5, there are only two types that deal neutral damage to it, both the Electric and the Water-type? A little bit unfortunate for Metagross, since the Water-type is very plentiful in these games. There's definitely too much water. Why have two primary trainers with this as their specialty? Watson, though, also has neutral damage, and that was really worrying to me, especially because his Magneton is likely one of the strongest Gym Leader Pokémon in the entire game. In this fight I'm using a Cherry Berry which I don't consume because I don't make contact with the Electrike. Watson sends in his Magneton, I go for Rock Smash and it does like maybe a third. Magneton paralyzes with Thunder Wave, my Cherry Berry gets consumed, and I hit Rock Smash again, not lowering defense. Okay, it has a 50% chance, I was really hoping for one of those on one of the first two turns. Magneton once again paralyzes Metagross, and this time I have no way to get rid of it. I want you to note here that my speed is currently 13. Clear Body doesn't prevent stat reductions from status conditions. Watson uses a Super Potion, so Magneton's going to hang around for a little bit longer. Also, it can use Sonic Boom for consistent damage. In the end, it's just a little bit too much, and Metagross gets its first loss here. I'm fairly close to level 28, so I just do a little bit more grinding to get this before I face Watson again. I was really hoping that that would give me the 3 hit on the Magneton, but it just barely looks like I am not going to get it once again. Also, still no defense drops right away. Takedown actually has has a higher effective power against this steel type, so I go for it, getting a little bit more damage, and it goes down. The only Pokemon left is Manectric. It goes for Howl on turn one. I take it down to orange health. It restores some back to green with the Citrus Berry, hits Shockwave, which doesn't do enough to knock me out, but since I'm using Takedown, the recoil damage finishes Metagross. Watching this footage back while I'm doing the narration, I think that maybe I'm playing a bit too conservative by going and training more. My thought process here was to go to level 30 for better damage ranges against the Magneton. After all, I did leave a lot of the trainers in the surrounding region because I thought that Metagross was doing very well. That being said, if I had got just a little bit luckier with Rock Smash, I think I can make it through this fight at the lower level level. Either way, this is the situation we're in now. I come back at level 30, and this time I get the defense drop right away. Actually, I get two right away, which is great. Also, Magneton did not go for a turn one Thunder Wave, so I cure this with the Cherry Berry, and then knock it out with two Rock Smashes, and I do not have a status condition for the Manectric. As a result, I am really not worried about it. I go for Confusion, doing half. It paralyzes me with Thunder Wave, but that doesn't matter because Metagross still hits. I've earned myself the Dynamo Badge, and with it, a 10% boost to my speed stat, which is very nice. 
On the next version of the game, I can pick up the TM for secret power. I don't teach it right away, but I will before the maxi fight. I take a fun gondola ride. By the way, this year in Pokemon Emerald, we did see a trainer here. It was the camper, and it occurred when I was doing my Milotic playthrough. I'm really glad that I finally got to see that this is a feature of the game. At the top of Mount Chimney, I have to face Maxi. Up first is Mightyena. Of course, Intimidate cannot lower my stats. That feels so good. I go for secret power, doing more than half. Take a small amount of damage from Bite. Maxi uses a super potion. I have to do two more secret powers as a result, but because of the speed interaction, I don't take any more damage. Next, he sends in Camerupt. Ordinarily, I would be scared of this thing, but it just goes for Ember, which is very weak, so I'm able to defeat it and clean up the Zubat. Okay, it's time to head to Laveridge Town for the Fire-type Gym Leader. This one, out of all the gyms, has the potential to be the most difficult for Metagross. Flannery leads with a Nummel really bad. I figure I can just one-shot it, and I do with secret power. Next, she sends in Slugma. This thing is also really bad, so once again, it's a one-hit. Okay, Camerupt. This is the Pokemon where things start to get scary because it can set up Sunny Day, but instead it just goes for Tackle. Ah, uh, I have no idea what happened there. That is a terrible choice, so I guess I've made it to the Torkoal. While going very quickly at four times speed, I wasn't sure what was going to do more damage to it. Confusion is a special move, and the Torkoal has lower special defense, whereas Secret Power is a physical move, but it has higher defense. That being said, the opposite is the case for my Metagross. Its attack stat is 133, and its special attack is only 82. For that reason, I felt that going for Secret Power was going to be the better choice. It's doing about a quarter each hit, and I'm also able to get Paralysis. This prevents one turn from the Torkoal, I bring it to low red health, and then it hits Overheat. This does massive damage, but Metagross survives. The problem here is that she has a Hyper Potion, so she's able to heal and finish Metagross. Okay, instead of going for secret power, let's try using confusion, and in this case, it is doing more damage. It also confuses the Torkoal, then it goes for body slam, I take it to orange health, Confusion ends, but it just uses Sunny Day, and with that, I have defeated Flannery. On the way back to Petalburg City in the forest, I cut this tree and grabbed the Miracle Seed. This seems like a strange item to pick up in a Metagross playthrough, but today I have given myself Hidden Power Grass. This move is decent coverage later in the game against water types, as well against a lot of Steven's team. This item isn't going to be useful now though, so we're going to save it for later. I exit the forest, and now it's time for the battle against Norman. This one should be fairly straightforward, because I resist his most powerful move. For the spin die, I have a person berry just in case it confuses me. Secret power is unfortunately not able to one hit, but it doesn't matter. I still knock it out basically for free. Next is Vigoroth. I go for secret power, doing more than half. Its faint attack does what can only be described as chip damage, and it goes down. Okay, time for the slacking. I actually make a mistake here using secret power against it on the first turn. It hits counter, which does massive damage to Metagross, taking me to red health. It's loafing on the next turn, I can use Secret Power, but then I can start alternating between Confusion when it is going to use Counter, and Secret Power when it's not. Using Confusion, I also inflict the Status Condition, which causes Slacking to hit itself conveniently, and I take it out with Secret Power. All that's left is Linoon, it does do 7 hit points of damage with Facade, but not enough to threaten Metagross. Here I realized I had forgotten the TM for return, so I backtracked to pick it up before heading to the Weather Institute and then facing the rival just south of Fort Tree City. This fight's pretty easy. I have taught Metagross return in the place of secret power by this point, but other than that, its moveset is still kind of bad. Take down Confusion and Rock Smash. Luckily for me, once I make it to Fort Tree City, I have reached level 38 and learned Psychic. This move comes at a very convenient time because it's going to help Metagross against Winona's Skarmory. She leads with Swablu, I one-shot with Return, move on to the next Pokemon, which is Altaria. I do more than half, it sets up Dragon Dance, eating its Orin Berry, and then it goes for Earthquake, which does a third. I don't think I'm going to have enough damage with my next attack, but Metagross gets a critical hit, so Altaria goes down anyways. Tropius is an easy two-shot, then against the Skarmory I use Psychic for special damage. All that's left is Pelipper. Because of how the AI chooses to send it in its Pokemon, it usually ends up being the case that their last Pokemon is kind of anticlimactic in the games. So, I've earned myself the 6th badge and the TM for Aerial Ace. I head to the top of Mount Pyre doing a little bit of plot stuff, and then I go over to the right hand side to pick up a hidden rare candy. I figured I'd show everyone where this is, just because I don't talk about it that much. 
On the inside of the mountain, I journey up to the top to grab the TM for Shadow Ball, and then at long last in Lily Cove City, I've reached the move deleter, so I get rid of Rock Smash. In its place, I teach Shadow Ball, and I'm also going to face the rival outside of the department store. I realized that I had forgot to get a fly user at this point, so I'm going to gain access to the department store just so I can get balls to grab a flyer. Of course, the rival is not very difficult. Maxi's next, and I wish I could say I had nothing to report here, but unfortunately I do. While Intimidate isn't going to mess me up, and the Mighty Anna does give me a free swagger boost because of the Person Berry. Following that, I one-hit the Camerupt, but the Crobat is faster by 10 speed, and it confuses Metagross. Metagross hits itself once, Crobat bites, it hits itself again, Crobat bites again, and for a third time it hits itself, allowing the Crobat to defeat me. In the next fight, it looked like it was going to happen again. It confuses, but this time it's not the case. Metagross is able to attack, so I've defeated Maxi. In Little Cove City, I pick up the TM for rest, and then I head to the Team Aqua hideout where I defeat Matt. With that portion of the plot out of the way, I'm ready to resume gym battles, and I face Tate and Liza. The Claydol is their most threatening Pokemon, so I'm going to attack it right away with Shadow Ball to hopefully prevent Earthquake. Unfortunately, it survives on the tiniest amount of health, so it is able to hit me with Earthquake either way. I anticipated that Tate and Liza were going to use its turn to heal with a Hyper Potion, so I attack the Zatu instead with Shadow Ball and knock it out. I go back to attacking the Claydol hoping for a better damage range, but I get a worse one, so it survives with more health, hitting Earthquake one more time. They use another Hyper Potion so I can knock out the Soul Rock, and I probably should have targeted the Lunatone next to finish it off, because the Claydol is just going to survive another hit. As a result, Metagross survives on only a sliver of health, and I can't defeat two Pokemon in one turn, so that's a loss. The solution here was immediately obvious to me. If I go to the Move Reminder and teach Iron Defense in the place of Confusion, then I can take less damage each turn from Earthquake, buying Metagross more time to finish off all of their Pokemon. Because I'm setting up my defense, I went with a Citrus Berry for this battle to give me a little bit more health. Turn 1, I set up Iron Defense, giving me plus 2. I take about a 6th from Earthquake now as a result, and then I damage the Claydol so that it won't use Earthquake on the next turn. By playing around the Hyper Potion this way, I'm able to knock out the Zatu, and then when the Soul Rock came in, since it can't confuse me or put me to sleep, I set up one more turn of Iron Defense before knocking it out. From here, I'm taking so little damage from the Claydol that I can just focus on knocking the Lunatone out. And after that, I can slowly take the Claydol out as they spam a bunch of Hyper Potions on it. Having the 7th badge is really helpful for me, you can see now that I have a special attack and a special defense boost, so Psychic is going to be hitting 10% harder. The mandatory double battle, which is usually not a problem, ends up being one for Metagross. It doesn't have a held item, and that's honestly just because I don't really plan for this fight. It's usually very simple. But in this case I get confused, and once again that is the end of Metagross. I attempted the fight again without a held item, I really think that I should be bringing a person berry into this fight as well, just to prevent swagger strategies. In spite of this omission, I am still able to win, although it is on orange health, so things were close. Just before releasing Kyogre, I grabbed the TM for Earthquake, which usually is not that useful until Steven at the very end of the game, so I'm not going to teach it right now. Then I face Archie, who's very simple to defeat. Rayquaza comes in, saves the day, and that concludes the plot line. There's only one last thing to do before the Elite Four, so let's complete the gym challenge. I mentioned earlier that Steel types take neutral damage from water type Pokemon. So one potentially could do some damage to me, especially the Whiskash, which knows Earthquake could be very threatening. However, its AI just chooses Rain Dance, and I'm able to knock it out for free, sustaining no damage. Next is Celio. Now this thing survives. That's likely because Metagross has a slow growth rate. I'm not leveling up that fast, so it's not really getting the damage ranges that you would want to be at this point in the game. The following Pokemon is Crawdont. You might expect it to be good against Metagross due to its typing but it really isn't. This thing's only dark type move is Taunt, and of course that doesn't do damage. Wand's Ace is Kingdra, I use Psychic, and I'm able to knock it out in two turns. Following this, I easily defeat Wally, and with him out of the way, I am ready for the final six trainers. Up first is Sydney. You'll notice here that I have a Person Berry. I honestly don't need this item. I also have changed my move setup in a major way. I have Brick Break, Aerial Ace, Shadow Ball, and Iron Defense. Iron Defense is there just in case I need it at some point during the league. Brick Break and Aerial Ace are both very good against Sydney's team, and then Shadow Ball is saved for once he's defeated, which is in very short order because I one-shot all of his Pokemon. Next is Phoebe. I can set up Iron Defense on turn one and then go for Shadow Ball to knock out her Pokemon. The first Dusclops does survive 
five. I was worried it was going to go for Curse, but instead it uses Shadow Punch. I knock it out, Metagross levels up, and now it has a chance to learn Meteor Mash. The move that makes the least sense to hold on my set right now is Aerial Ace. It's really only good against Sableye and then the champion's Ludicolo. So I'm going to teach the powerful Steel-type move in its place. Even though Shadow Ball is not able to one-hit the following Dusclops, I take almost no damage from Earthquake due to my prior Iron Defense setup. From there, I one-shot the Bayonets, and I also get to use Meteor Mash for the first time against the Sableye. Okay, so it's time for Glacia. I'm really happy I taught Meteor Mash, because I can now use this move for super effective damage here against her. I'm not able to one-shot the first Celio. This is probably because Metagross is almost getting behind with the level curve. It's level 55 when the Wall Rain is level 53. I was hoping here to get an attack boost with Meteor Mash. I don't, but I can just two-hit the Wall Rain anyways. I did get the attack boost there, which is great, because now her final three Pokemon are all one-hits. I've mentioned twice now that my Metagross is falling behind in levels, so I'm going to use 8 rare candies to take it up from level 56 all the way to level 65. Drake is next. I've replaced Shadow Ball with Return and given Metagross the Silk Scarf. To start things off, I've set up Iron Defense when the Shell Gun goes for Protect, then it uses Rock Tomb. It can't lower my speed, so this doesn't matter, and I take it out. Next, he sends in Flygon. I use Meteor Mash against it since it has the highest effective power, and I also get the attack boost. That's perfect. Clear Body foils the Salamence's Intimidate, Meteor Mash one hits, and from there I am going to sweep. I knock the Kingdra out, and the following Altaria with a single return each. Metagross has made it to the champion. Against Wallace, I really wanted some style points, so I've taught Metagross Sludge Bomb in the place of Iron Defense. When I played Emerald version with Jirachi, the solution for Steven ended up being Toxic, which I found absolutely hilarious. I like today that I am using another Steel type and also using a Poison type move. He sends in Whiskash second, and it does a bit with Earthquake, but not enough to be truly alarmed. Following that, Gyarados comes out, Return does more than half, and then more damage stacks up because I get hit by a second Earthquake. Tentacruel has lower physical defense, so it goes down in a single hit, and then against Ludicolo, I can use Sludge Bomb. Metagross has made it to the ace, so will it be able to knock out Milotic in two hits? And the answer is yes, but not if the Milotic KOs first with Surf. I tried the fight again hoping he would get worse damage ranges, but this time he doesn't, and then the Gyarados does something much scarier by setting up Dragon Dance. This means Earthquake does way too much damage, so I have a second reset. Okay, Sludge Bomb was cool, but I'm gonna teach Rest in its place just so I can heal once I make it to the Milotic. That is gonna make this fight much more consistent. Plus, there's another small optimization by using Meteor Mash first turn against both the Wailord as well as the Whiskash. I'm gonna two-hit both of these Pokemon anyways, so it's better to roll for the secondary effect rather than just using Return twice. I get especially lucky in this fight because I critical hit the Whiskash and then get the attack boost. Both of those things working together allows my next return to one-shot the Gyarados, completely bypassing all of the Earthquakes. Tentacruel is a one-hit. I don't have Sludge Bomb for the Ludicolo, but with a higher attack stat, it doesn't matter. And finally, with full health against the Milotic, return one-shots. Metagross finishes the league with a time of 1 hour, 44 minutes, and 54 seconds, with 8 resets at level 66. This is a game time of 6 hours and 16 minutes. I'm sure you're curious how Metagross is stacking up against a bunch of other Pokémon to this point in the game, so let's review a couple contemporary results. Metacham had a time of 1 hour, 37 minutes, and 27 seconds when it finished Steven. Armaldo had a time that was a little under 10 minutes slower, 1 hour and 47 minutes and 8 seconds, so Metagross is just barely not going to be able to squeeze in under that amount of time, but maybe, just maybe, it could beat Hariyama's time of 1 hour 50 minutes and 40 seconds. To prepare for Steven, I do three things. The first one is grabbing the leftovers from the SS Titles lower deck, then I go to the move reminder and teach Iron Defense in the place of Return, and finally, I teach Earthquake in the place of Rest. I don't think Metagross needs my favorite move. And the best way for me to show you why is to show you the footage against Steven. His first Pokemon is Skarmory, and usually you need Rest in this fight specifically because it likes to use Toxic, but with a Steel-type, that is completely irrelevant. Plus, Skarmory has no moves that are even close to being good against Metagross. I can set up so quickly with Iron Defense that the Leftovers are fully healing me each turn. Granted, I am going to have to knock the Skarmory out very slowly, and it could get critical hits along the way. I'm using Meteor Mash against it just in case I get the attack boost. After all, this move has the same effective power as Brick Break. 
Next, Steven sends in his Claydol. Usually because of moveset reasons, this is the most annoying Pokemon to knock out, but Meteor Mash is neutrally effective against it. The only thing it's able to do is set up Light Screen, which is completely irrelevant because I only have physical moves. Plus, against the Aggron who's next, I can use Brick Break to just shatter the screen. Instead of doing that, I really should have used Earthquake for more damage, because the Aggron survives, hits Thunder, and paralyzes Metagross, so now I'm going to have to win with a status condition. That's pretty annoying. I continue using Brick Break, which is objectively the wrong choice knocking the Aggron out over two more turns, and move on to Steven's ace, Metagross. So, in the mirror match, mine is obviously going to emerge victorious because I have defensive boosts, whereas his does not. Following two Earthquakes, he only has two Pokemon left over. Cradley is first, things get annoying here because of confusion. By the way, once again, should be using a different move. Definitely Meteor Mash is better. I figure it out this time, and the Cradley goes down. Last is Armaldo, it goes for Water Pulse, and I snap out of confusion right after, which is very convenient timing. Meteor Mash connects and Steven is defeated. Metagross finishes the game with a time of 1 hour 50 minutes and 13 seconds, with 8 resets at level 71. This is a game time of 6 hours and 36 minutes. Okay, so it did it. Metagross is slightly faster than Hariyama in terms of real time. That being said, it was very close between the two. Metagross is only 27 seconds faster, and I played very poorly with Hariyama, and I don't think that that's the case for this pseudo-legendary. With these results, it earns itself the third spot overall in my real time tier list. What about game time, and in this case, Metagross didn't perform as well. This is largely because Hariyama had a lot of resets, which means its game time is going to be lower. Metagross's time of 6 hours and 36 minutes is 12 minutes slower than Armaldo, and 6 minutes faster than Crawdont. As a result, in this tier list, it earns itself the 4th spot. Now to effectively bookend this video, we need to talk about the comparison between Metagross and Salamence, now that we have results for both of them. In a solo playthrough, Metagross is far superior. There are many factors that contribute to this, I think that Metagross's typing is better, I think that it overall has better moves they can use throughout the game, its ability is better. Remember that while Intimidate does lower attack, a lot of the enemies start with special attackers, and then you always have to watch the animation and the text, which delays the Pokemon that you are running. In the past I have intentionally not taken Intimidate, in part for this reason. An example of that is my old Mawile playthrough. Now all of that definitely contributes, but I think the single differentiating factor between these two pseudo-legendaries is the fact that by default Metagross gets a setup move, which is helpful against Steven Stone. Iron Defense is just so good. Salamence, on the other hand, does not get Dragon Dance unless it's an egg move, and as a result, it definitely underperforms. That's it for Pokemon Emerald this year, and with the season behind us, let's do a brief recap. Torkoal started everything off, Love Disc was the Valentine's Day special, after that I did Tropius and then Delcaddy, where I revealed that my wife and I had adopted Churro, our first cat. In the following months, I played Milotic, Altaria, Aerodactyl, Kyle, the shiny Poochiena I caught during my Love Disc video, Breloom, Crawdont, Exploud, and then on my wedding day, I premiered Gardevoir. Following the Psychic type, I did a contrast with Hariyama, a physical fighting type, and then for Halloween, thematically, I played the Fossils. I felt somewhere in the year I had to squeeze in Pelipper, so I did it in November, and then for December, I did the cool Pokemon, at least that's how I thought of them, Manectric, Medicham, and Agron, Vigoroth and Slacking, by popular request, and finally, the pseudo-legendaries. This really did feel like my first full year playing Emerald version, because the prior year, while I was playing the game, each one of my playthroughs was essentially just testing the software, because I was investing the mass majority of my time in mapping Emerald and developing tools. I'm excited for what's coming up in the next season, because yes, it is planned out. That being said, I want to leave you all with this sense of anticipation. So, I'll see you in February for the next Emerald video. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much, it means the world to me. Now, if you have made it this far, you are incredible. I'll see you tomorrow for another daily December release.